Well, I don't know. Well, it's been a little bit since I've done a recipe. Just because I broke all the knobs off my, my, my stove at home. I was moving a box through the kitchen and just clipped the stove and just ripped off all the buttons in one shot. So, I was down for a little bit, but I got them fixed. And since I uh, am on my best motorcyclist behavior due to my traffic ticket I recently got, we've got time. So, let's do a recipe video. Let me fire up. It's been a little bit since I got the voice going, so let me see if I still got it. <clears throat> Today, on a very special Meat and Motorcycles Florentine Roast Edition, we make Florentine Roast, Crosta Fiorentino. This is a good one. Uh, I like it. It's easy. And it's a cut of meat that uh, normally you would just cook the hell out of, braise the hell out of. But in this case, you can cook it kind of fast if you do it right. Florentine Roast is the eye round. What would be a hamstring on a human person? A human person? A human person? And uh, it's good all, all times of the year. We're winding down winter here in New York City. Not quite spring yet, still pretty brisk, uh, but good for, you know, cooking some red meat. And maybe you don't want to, you know, fire the grill up just yet. Here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need one beef eye round. And one eye round will come in anywhere between two and five pounds if it's a really big cow, but it, you know, depends on how many, who, depends on how many, it depends on how many you're cooking for. It depends on how many you're cooking for. You're gonna need one bunch of fresh sage, one bunch of fresh rosemary, extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, a cast iron skillet, and a ripping hot oven. There we go. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees, that's hot. Get your cast iron skillet, get it on the stove, get it going to about medium, medium high heat. Pour a little bit of olive oil into your hand, and rub the olive oil onto the eye round. And what that's going to do is it's going to get it, you know, nice and oily, but without having too much oil, so you smoke the whole house out and you waste oil. You don't want to fry it, you just want to get it a little moist. Drizzle it with salt and pepper, and then put it in that hot cast iron skillet. Make sure you brown it on all sides. So once you got it colored on all sides, then put that cast iron skillet into your 400 degree oven. Set your timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Once you got it in the oven, get your sage, take the leaves off the stems, and get your rosemary leaves off the stems, and then you're going to want to, with a very sharp knife, you're going to want to dice that up. You don't want to over chop it because what will happen is it will all get black from all the oils getting smashed out. It also helps to have a nice sharp knife so you're not just pressing it as you're slicing it and getting all the uh, flavorful oils on your cutting board instead of inside of your herbs. Put it in a bowl, you can whisk in your extra virgin olive oil, and you're making like a little herbal uh, rub, uh, marinade, as they say. Put that aside, and then at 20 minutes, using a thermometer, temp your meat. Now here's the deal with the Florentine roast. It is super, super lean, okay? It doesn't have the fat and the marbling that you're used to if you're only eating like strip steaks, New York steaks, ribeyes, that kind of stuff. Okay? And what that means is it's best enjoyed like rare, rare plus. If you break medium rare, which is fine if you do it medium rare, but you go any more than that, it's not going to be a very pleasurable experience by the way of chewing and tasting. Okay? Your target degree is about 100 to 105 degrees. 20 minutes should get you close. Probably won't get you there, but it'll get you close enough. See how close you are, and then check it every about, you know, five minutes after that. At about 100 to 105 degrees, take it out. Leave it in the cast iron skillet, and pour your herbal olive oil mixture over the top of it. Rub it around, and then get yourself some tin foil, and kind of make a tent over the, uh, come on, what are you doing, pal? Make yourself kind of a little tent and then just let it sit 
for about another five minutes. And what you're doing is, you're one, allowing the meat to rest. It's gonna rise in temperature. And the, the herbs that are in the olive oil will begin to warm with the heat of the meat. They're not going to cook as much as they're going to kind of release some of their, their oils and their essential flavor and adhere to the piece of meat. So you're not cooking them as much as you're warming them up and kind of coaxing out the flavor, you know, with, with the time. Then after it's sat for about five to 10 minutes, take the piece of meat out carefully and with a very sharp knife, slice it into very thin medallions, as thin as you can get, okay? And when you slice them, you know, you want to slice them into thin medallions, but then you want to lay them down on top of each other. If you spread them out right away, they're just going to lose their heat really fast. Slice them up into however much you need. You put them on a platter. Give it a little sprinkle of uh, sea salt and a drizzle of some really nice extra virgin olive oil. And that's it. Florentine roast. The easy way. Now, you can do this with whatever side you like. But that's it, man. Florentine roast. Kind of the, uh, the lesser appreciated cuts of meat because of its leanness. But if you do it right, it's a pretty good piece of meat. And it's pretty easy and quick. And you can feed a lot of people. And then with your leftovers, right, you let it cool down, put it in the fridge. And then the next day, put it in a, put it in a roll or, or some cheese Whiz. You got yourself a nice Philly cheesesteak. And that was Meat and Motorcycles Florentine Roast. And that's it. That's all I got for you today, guys. Bon appetito.